Uh, hey, it's it's quite an honor for me to share the stage with two with you two, and I don't refer to you as as Dr. Pollard and Dr. Winters, although that is what we should call you. But it's Channing and Nasha, and and it is in, an incredible honor for me to share the stage with you because you're two of my heroes, and you've been part of this journey from the very beginning. You believed that this was going to be something special from the very beginning, and and to look now and to to see what's happened and all of the support and new leadership and new vision is pretty pretty exciting. So this trial that we're in, Channing, I'm going to ask you to kick us off a little bit. Can you explain the trial design quickly and where we are today? Sure, Jimmy. So we are doing a standard phase one trial, three plus three design. So for those of you not familiar, it's where you put three patients on the trial at increasing dose levels until they develop a dose limiting toxicity from the drug. And then we add three more patients until we reach the maximum tolerated dose. We have eight dose levels planned. And I've personally consented 12 patients since I last stood on the stage last year. <laughs> yes, that is huge. Nice. Um, and we have about 18 to 24 more planned, depending how it goes. And can patients still, so obviously it's still open, and we've got time to do that. What's the time frame on that? How long will the trial remain open? Right. Um, so I am thrilled to say we're... Uh, going to probably take another 18 to 24 months to finish those um, because of some requirements that we have with the FDA. So the FDA requires that I personally follow a patient for 28 days to make sure they're safe before we give the next patient drug. Because of that, it'll take some time to complete this, so 18 to 24 months. Fantastic, fantastic. So Nasha, so you were instrumental because of the work that you've done with mistletoe in helping us to advance from the initial um, design, which was going to be subcutaneous injection of, of mistletoe. And because of what you've done, it allowed us to jump right to the intravenous variety. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about, I know that uh, Dr. Pollard's not able to share the specifics of the trial, unfortunately. So you need to let us in behind the scenes about <laughs> the success that you had with using mistletoe, and, and in particular, the IV mistletoe. Well, um, I had great experience for many years with the subcutaneous until about 2014 when I attended a conference where Dr. Paller was also involved and decided to branch out into the subcutaneous, or excuse me, into the intravenous. And the experiences I had with that took my practice and my experience to the next level of people's response. Um, some basic things that I saw happen clinically was people immediately having a sense of well-being in the midst of their IV people who were on, in some situations, death's door, that were really failing, really, really sick, really weak, to watch their vitality, their color, everything change as they were having the IV drip. We also saw massive tumor lysis, meaning really quick pushback of the actual tumors. Sometimes that can be a little bit scary um, initially because the labs can look a little bit frightening. <laughs> um, but what we find is that that's a very good and robust response. And some of the things that Evie Lee's talked about earlier about pushing back angiogenesis, anti-inflammatory -inflamm um, patterns happening with that, very, very exciting to see people have extreme resolution of their pain in the midst of these IVs as well. So many places that it seems to have just given a new leg of life to a lot of our patients that were otherwise failing. Mm. It's amazing. It's great to hear of the success and, and all those really complicated words that you just shared with us that we that I'm having trouble getting my head around. But in other words, the translation is it's working. Yeah. Okay. It's good stuff. So, it's good stuff. Yeah. so tell us from your perspective, Channing, you go first and then Nasha, you can finish up. Um, why is this trial important from your perspective? So from my perspective, um, this I believe big is amazing and provides amazing care for many patients. But for, I'm looking forward to the day um, that we can show if mistletoe really does improve overall survival and improves quality of life. Both of those things matter for my patients. And if we can show that in an FDA-approved trial, then we can look towards the day where other oncologists can prescribe mistletoe and insurance companies can pay for it. And that will really transform care. And I would absolutely say ditto to that, but also as a clinician who has used this in my practice since 2003 and IV since 2014, I already have gotten to witness, uh, got to witness thousands of people have a very positive experience with it 
already. And my colleague and I have trained over 250 physicians around the country in the use of this, so we'd like to see these numbers continue to grow and these experiences to continue to, to grow as well. I need to add one thing. One, Nash has been an incredible resource for me as I get more experience with the drug. And it has been a real joy to do this trial because most of the trials I do are investigational drugs that are toxic. And so this may be toxic, but they all feel better and it's just fun to treat them, so. Fantastic. Hey, join me in giving another round of applause for Dr. Pollard and Dr. Winters. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>